This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Unette Gentry. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. This segment of the news is brought to you by Silver State Health, bringing quality medical and psychiatric care to Pahrump. Call 775-505-1214 for an appointment. So glad you can join us on this Tuesday. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Unette Gentry. It's January 26th. Your wonderland in the desert. Most made the best of Mother Nature's surprise. Today, students with the Nye County School District got to stay home for a different reason than they have this past year, snow. Perup received about two inches of snow overnight, which works out to be about 0.47 inches of precipitation, according to John O'Brien in the Perump Weather Center at Gamebird and Homestead Roads. The surrounding mountains, roadways, fields, and yards filled with fluffy white snow throughout the night, surprising residents early this morning. Locals bundled up in their warmest clothes, grabbed their cameras, kids, and dogs to have fun while it lasted. Highway 160 at Mountain Springs was pounded with snow, but locals were able to manage managed to get through it this morning into Las Vegas. Interstate I-15 closed in both directions at the California state line in Prim, Nevada, due to hazardous driving conditions. Mountain Pass is also closed to Baker, California. The National Weather Service is predicting a chance of rain showers Wednesday morning, cloudy, becoming mostly sunny tomorrow. Thursday, 30% chance of showers after 4 p.m. here in Pahrump, with snow expected in the mountains through Thursday and Friday. Mount Charleston is expecting 5 to 9 inches of snow over the weekend. Lee Canyon is still closed at Highway 95, and Kyle Canyon requires chains or snow tires if you're planning to go see the mountains to play. For information, go to GoMountCharleston.com. If you'd like to see today's snow pictures from all around town, go to our local Pahrump Facebook page. In other local news, Nevada Highway Patrol is crediting one of its troopers with successfully presenting a possible suicide. Nevada Highway Patrol says troopers and Lincoln County deputies were dispatched to a possible suicidal subject in Panica, a small town about 20 miles from the Utah border. Trooper Stephen Free located a man who was holding a knife to his own throat and yelling, get your gun out, while quickly advancing toward the trooper. Free told the man to back up, but the man ignored his commands and continued toward the trooper. Trooper Free then successfully deployed his taser, causing the man to drop to the ground, where deputies disarmed him and took him into custody. NHP says Trooper Free's ability to remain calm during an incredible intense and dangerous encounter resulted in the best possible outcome, adding that troopers' actions likely prevented a tragic outcome with a person who was in crisis. Wow. Well, at the Board of County Commissioners meeting on Wednesday, Brett Wagner, Director of Planning for Nye County, brought forth an application for a zone change for a parcel of land located at 2871 East Mesquite Avenue here in Prump. The rest request was to change from zone to community facilities to open a space to allow for a public shooting range. Where this site is, it currently has the shooting range for the Nye County Sheriff's Office. Um, obviously, there's been a desire to uh, build a new shooting site that would be open to the public um, in evaluating all the different lands owned by the county. Um, this is the best candidate for right now. Uh, what this application does is actually changes, <clears throat> it applies the split zoning to the property, um, changing it to open space for the portion of the property, 31.5 acres, which would allow for a public shooting range. Um, the only other thing I would add is, you know, in the past there's, you know, back when the Sheriff's Department had an item before the board for the CUP and all that, there was some questions in regards to the power lines from VEA. And we've been working with VEA and in our design um, that we're work currently working on taking those into consideration. And last word I received from them was they were in support of this project. Commissioners had no questions for Wagner regarding the zone change. They were immediately ready to entertain a motion. Once moved and seconded, the board approved the zone change with an approval vote of 5-0. And stay tuned. We'll be right back with all the financial news you need right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. 
Welcome back to News 25. Well, young investors are helping to drive up a number of different stocks. And the pandemic is driving up toy sales. Angela Miles reports. Topping our news, the big squeezes on. GameStop, AMC, and Bed Bath & Beyond are among the stocks that are suddenly soaring. It's happening as traders who are short the stock are forced to buy shares or exit positions because they thought the stocks would drop. It's not happening. And then investors, especially young investors, are jumping in and adding to the momentum of the stocks. It's speculated that young traders are using the Reddit website to spot stocks that have high levels of short interest to create a short squeeze. Toys are in demand during the pandemic. The NPV Group reports sales of toys, including games, dolls, scooters, and Legos, rose to $25.1 billion in 2020. That is good for a 16% gain, higher than 2019. It's benefiting investors in stocks, including Hasbro and Mattel, during the past year. Well, a person driving what's believed to be a stolen vehicle leads Knight County deputies on a chase through the southern portion of Pahrump. It started as a traffic stop of a suspicious car, which deputies say was displaying a license plate from a vehicle reported stolen out of Las Vegas. But the driver didn't want to stop, leading officers on a lengthy chase through a large area on Pahrump's south side. The pursuit reached speeds of nearly 100 miles per hour at times, and the suspect managed to elude officers for more than 20 minutes. Deputies lost sight of the vehicle, a white four-door Honda Accord near Rainbow Avenue and Highway 160. A short time later, they found the vehicle abandoned behind a home at the corner of Alfalfa Street. Street and Rainbow Avenue. Officers set up a perimeter hoping to find the male driver, and despite some tips from witnesses, they were not able to locate him at the time. However, while investigating the abandoned vehicle, deputies report finding other vehicles on the property they suspect to be stolen. As the Nye County Sheriff's Office investigation continued into the afternoon and officers searched the property, they discovered four individuals hiding in the attic. A total of five people were taken into custody, though we don't know what charges they may be facing. It's unclear if one of those individuals is the suspect from the pursuit. Animal control officers and Child Protective Services were also called to assist at the scene. The investigation continues. According to the Department of Employment Training and Rehabilitation's December 2020 economic report, the Silver State added back 8,200 jobs since November 2020. When compared to December 2019, jobs are still down by nearly 97,000 for a current total of 1.3 million jobs. Nevada's seasonally adjusted unemployment rate was 9.2% in December 2020, compared to 3.7% in December 2019. Area total estimates are seasonally adjusted to account for regularly seen economic trends, but estimates discussing sector employment and sub-rate unemployment are not adjusted for seasonally. The unemployment rate in Nye County was 7.2% in December 2020, compared to November's 2020 rate of 7.8% and 4.5% in December 2019. Well, recently we introduced you to Cheryl Anderson, who runs the Prump Road Commuters Report on Facebook. She received the Andre Butch Harper Act of Kindness Award, which is presented to local residents who go above and beyond to serve our community. Now she's giving back by recognizing others who've helped her. Hi, my name is Cheryl Anderson. I'm here with some of our businesses that um, decided to give free services on my contest in the Prump Road Commuters Report to help out citizens in Prump in a time in 2020 when everything just kind of was um, upside down. And they just gave generously of their time and their services just to uh, give hope in a time of great need. And I just wanted to take the time to recognize them today. And I wanted to start with you, Deanne O'Donnell. You have a page that's uh, people helping people in. On each one of the certificates, it's going to say appreciation. Deanne O'Donnell awarded for being a light and the heartbeat of your community in 2020 for selflessly giving free services and hope in a fearful and an uncertain time. And I just wanted to say thank you and for your services to your community. And then I wanted to thank Denise from Prompt Auto Plaza for many oil changes and tire rotations. Axe Exterminators, thank you very much for your free services and giving free bug sprays in a time when, when people just can't really afford things like that. And I appreciate that. Todd's Carpet, thank you so very much for all of your uh, services that you gave for free carpet cleaning and 
So we just thank you for that. Thank you. Crazy Calico, I just wanted to thank you for your services for yeah. that as well. We have no loose ends. You gave a free haircut. And I want to thank you for that. I wanted to recognize those that could not make it today, and that's Java Junkies for their free coffee, a place to go, donated a certificate for food. Purcell Tires donated um, free oil changes with their tires that they helped me out with my tires on my contest, and I want to thank them. Saida Tradu donated free oil changes and tire rotations as well. We want to thank you as well. Estate Auctions 411, I want to thank you for your two gift cards that you gave. Thank you and God bless you. Mindy Coles, she gave a free haircut. We want to thank you, Mindy. Jessica Ireland, she gave a free mini service and we're going to thank you. And I just wanted to, Heather Dyer from Lisa Bond Realtors, she gave a certificate. I just want to thank you all for the time that you gave and the services that you gave to your community. It's, it's a big deal. So I want to thank you and say God bless you to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, don't grab that remote. We have an update on the nation's goal of working toward herd immunity regarding the coronavirus right after this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by Canyon Ridge Periodontics. Give them a call at 702-966-0302. Welcome back. Well, as school districts across the country struggle to educate kids amid COVID-19, the city of North Las Vegas decided it was up to them to meet the needs of their students. As a result, a unique micro school was created, giving children in jeopardy of slipping through the cracks due to distance learning, a physical place to go to school. Kim Martinez reports. Literally a few days, a school was, was born. City manager Ryan Juden says the idea for his city's micro school was born out of the need to solve a massive problem, as COVID school closures threatened to hinder the education of a large number of students who live in the city of North Las Vegas. The digital divide in North Las Vegas is somewhere around 30 to 40 percent. Those concerning numbers are different than an online parent survey from the state school system, which reported that only 5 percent of kids were in peril of tech issues that would make online learning from home a big struggle. City leaders wisely questioned those results. We thought that it was kind of a problematic to do an online survey to identify how many of those people are not online. City leaders knew it was up to them to find an alternative versus the state's expectation that all kids could successfully switch to full online learning at their homes. You want me to read it to you? So they started their city-run micro school called SUMA the Southern Nevada Urban Micro Academy. The concept is to pick a, have a curriculum. Um, it's a computer-based curriculum where a child comes in and they are assessed and whatever level they are is where they start. Set up at various city libraries and centers, the kids have a place to come again. There's plenty of computers, reliable Wi-Fi, and no more than 18 in a class. Students also have the benefit of being overseen by learning guides. I would describe it as homeschooling, outside of home with a guide, somebody that could really drive the learning for each student. Flora Espinosa has two students at the micro school and says focus on communication and technology is what she loves the most. And Sharice Coleman, an essential worker, adds that overseeing her kids' education from home was tough. I'm a single mom with two kids, so that part was hectic, trying to get two kids at home, online. Every teacher used different programs to turn in different lessons. The internet issues at home, like one child would kick another child off the internet. Now with the micro school, she's found a vast improvement, not just in the emotional toll, but academics as well. So here they were actually able to tackle what lessons she wasn't really proficient in, go back to the basics. I am eager to get up every day and come here. Parents and students are so excited about this new microschooling model, they tell us they plan on continuing here long term regardless of what happens with COVID. So is microschooling going to play a big role when it comes to the future of education? When given the environment, I think that, you know, we have to evolve and this is a great alternative and for our family, it's been a godsend, really. Kim Martinez reporting. 
And if you'd like to know more about the City of North Las Vegas' Micro School program, you can log on to nlvcares.com. Well, as COVID-19 vaccines are made available to more people across the country, we're beginning to work towards herd immunity. Dr. Frank Esper is an infectious disease specialist with Cleveland Clinic's Children's. He says herd immunity happens when there's enough people protected in our community to prevent continued spread of the virus. When you see a high percentage of people who are immune to a germ, then that germ is not able to uh, spread so quickly through the community. It's finding roadblocks because people are immune. And when a virus comes to you and you have immunity against it, that, that's a dead end for that virus. That virus has been blocked from spreading. Dr. Esper says vaccination is the best way to achieve herd immunity. When people get a vaccine, he says they're protecting themselves and the community, including those who can't get the vaccine for medical reasons. The number of people who need to be vaccinated to achieve herd immunity differs for each virus. For coronavirus, he believes 70 to 90 percent of the population will need to be vaccinated to maintain protection, although scientists are still trying to determine exact numbers. As more and more people get that that immunity, the spread of the virus is going to slow and slow. Uh, and eventually we hope that it's going to get to the point where we get this herd immunity. Dr. Esper says it will be several months before we see large numbers of people within communities who are immune to COVID-19. In the meantime, vaccinated or not, it's important to wear your mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands. All right, for today's Save a Pet, we're back at Desert Haven Animal Society where Darby O'Donnell is introducing us to a shy but really sweet cat named Layla. Today's Save a Pet is proudly sponsored by Jason Ernest with Mountain West Lawyers. Call 775-727-9500. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society and today we are joined with Layla. Layla, what came in as a stray, she's about, um, we would just say she's an adult female. She has beautiful gray all the way down and a lot, very large white chest. She's a fluffy kite, so she goes and she loses a lot of hair. Um, Layla does look like she has a little bit of a film over her right eye. They're going and getting that looked at right now, but she came in as a straight and she's quite shy. So she would probably make a wonderful kitty. She does seem very friendly and interested in getting pet, but she's just quite not there yet. So if you were to go and adopt Layla, um, the best thing to do is at least give her a minimum of a week. Go and put her in a situation um, where she has like a little place that she could retreat to. When she's feeling overwhelmed with food and water in a little bed, and then allow her to go and walk around the house and make her feel comfortable for a minimum of a week. I personally would even say give her up to two weeks. So if you want to come and see Layla or any of her friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, give them a call ahead of time to make an appointment, 775-751-7020, or you can look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Hi, it's John Kohler for KPVM Channel 25 on location on Highway 160. Man, we're approaching the mountains, and look at the snow. This is just kind of rare to see it this far down the hill, and I wanted to capture it. I don't know if I can do it exactly, but boy, it's some crazy weather these last couple days. we got a little more coming. We'll tell you all about it when we return. News 25 weather is brought to you by... Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. How did you deal with the snowpocalypse? I didn't see too many uh, accidents out there. It was a little slick, windy, uh, and windy and a little icy, but uh, uh, nobody was really having trouble with it. Good for you for slowing down. Yeah, they slowed down good up in Fernley. It only got to 37 degrees today for a high mark, 29 for a low. Out in Fallon, it was 38 degrees for a high, 31 for a low. In Carson City, 38 for a high, 31 for a low. In Tonopah, the low mark in the state, uh, 30 degrees for a high today, 22 for a low. Uh, Goldfield saw as much as 34 degrees and as little as 22 as we skate towards morning on these uh, icy roads. Uh, Beatty, 44 degrees for a high today, 31 for a low. And out in Amargosa, 46 degrees for a high today, 33 for a low as the 
roads melt nicely and turn to water again. That's nice. Las Vegas, 46 degrees, kind of sloppy wet out on the streets, 36 for low tonight. And in Death Valley, all the way up to 60 degrees for high, 47 for a low here in the paradise of Pahrump. Well, let's take a look. Pahrump, Pahrump, Pahrump. 42 degrees is our current temperature. That's off the high mark of 43 uh, earlier, south winds to 11 miles per hour. Boy, it's been humid, humid. That's a silent H pronunciation. 59% this morning as the sun rose at 6.48 a.m. and uh, set this evening at 5.04 p.m. More humidity, 50% as we head towards evening. Winds kicking up a little bit. East, southeasterly winds to 17 miles per hour as we head towards a low spot of uh, 36 in the morning. But take a look at this tomorrow. Oh, 25% uh, chance of rain. So that, I guess that means it's only going to rain on... One out of four of you. How about that? Uh, 19 mile per hour winds. That's the average speed. We're going to experience some gusts. And the next couple of days, Wednesday, Thursday, winds will die down on Friday, but then the uh, chance of rain increases dramatically. We might have some more rain, some more precip. I don't think we're going to have the snow because the temperatures are sneaking up into the uh, high 40s and low 50s as we march on into the week. And uh, the lows uh, staying around freezing as much as 40, 42 degrees on the low end as we go on through the week. So let's uh, you know, make plans accordingly. Thanks for driving safe. The brakes are not your friend when it's icy, but uh, don't look like we're gonna have to worry about that for too much longer. All right, let's go back to the desk. It's you, Nett and Deanna. Well, you know, John and Missy are both from Alaska, yes, so this wasn't a big this. surprise. This John went up to uh, the top of Mountain Springs uh, this morning, got some kids playing look up there on the snow. Look at that it's beautiful. And it looks great up there. And then he um, had such a great time watching the kids playing yes. and uh, just filming everything up there, and yes. I really appreciate him going up there. But I got to tell you, um, I had a little bit of damage from the snow at oh, my no. house this morning. Um, some canopies that I had out there, some sunshades, they couldn't handle the snow, and oh. they got torn down, and a little bit of damage to a pole oh. that got yanked out of the ground. And but no one some, injured. Yeah, 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 exactly. A fence line kind of fell over a little bit. But I got a handyman coming in, so he'll good, fix all that. Good, but. good. Yes, be careful out there. It's beautiful winter weather, but there are people up there stopping. Be careful. Look for Especially traffic if you're signals. playing up there. Yes, if right. you're playing up there, be careful. Mm -hmm. Make sure to signal. And be careful driving back at night throughout the night, some of the snow might melt, turn mm -hmm. into ice. It gets slick, so be careful out there. You gotta um, look on our local prompt because yes. everybody posted all their pictures. I yes. told people today the first reaction my dog had was to bark at the snow and was running oh, around barking at it the whole time. And <laughs> Missy said that's what she did too because she left Alaska to yes. leave the snow. I thought we were moving to the desert. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's the first significant, really significant snowfall yes. since I've been here. I've, I've seen snow for many years, but not as much as this. It is it's beautiful. I do love it. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna. And I'm Yunette. Thanks so much for joining us, and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful snowy Tuesday. Good night. Good night.